it is a day or two before the recording of this video that uh, Mama Ida Odinga bodyguard was killed. This is a comment from an expert in VIP protection. Uh, I'm wondering, you see there are two things which are coming up. There is uh, some uh, unsubstantiated uh, report that uh, during his free time he was a bouncer. That is very dangerous. The higher a VIP is, the more important that uh, his or her security is given proper briefing. Such that uh, the security personnel who are guarding a VIP uh, can only rest if the VIP is out of the country. Uh, for example, if Mama Ida leaves Kenya to go to whatever country, and she takes all her security but leaves others behind. Those who are left behind are supposed to be on completely uh, relaxation, doing nothing apart from maybe a person like me listening to rumba music and uh, occasionally, for those, me, I don't take alcohol, but for those who take alcohol, this is a time when you can now drink because you know that uh, you cannot be summoned uh, to protect the VIP at a short notice. Understand that VIP protection, you are supposed to guard the VIP any, any time. Like maybe you have been guarding the VIP for 14 hours. You go to your house and then as you are taking the, your shower, you are immediately called that uh, there is an emergency and you have to go back. So, so long as the VIP you are protecting is within the boundaries of the country, you are not on leave, you are not on off, you are not on anything. So the allegation, which I don't know whether it is true, but if it is true that uh, Mama Ida's bodyguard who was recently killed used to act as a bouncer in nightclubs, that was very bad because for a VIP, you know, imagine the death of Mama Ida and uh, especially the kind of supporters her husband has, by the time we know why, take the example of uh, the Nandi politician who, who was killed by a Kisi policeman in Eldred. Uh, by the time it was known that uh, it was a love triangle, something like that, already the tribal clashes had caused a lot of people death. So I think in future, we should have a situation where uh, those people who are on VIP protection are instructed that even when they're on their annual leave, annual leave would only mean that uh, maybe you can be given 8 to 12 hours notice to resume back to work. Otherwise, you are on duty throughout. The only time me as somebody who has attended a VIP protection course I'd believe that the only time that a VIP protector can feel very relaxed is when the VIP whom you, you protect is out of the country, let's say, for two weeks. Those two weeks, you can drink yourself hell, can do anything, you can sleep 28 hours a day without any worry. But uh, even the idea, maybe it is not true, but even the idea that probably... Uh, Mama Ida's bodyguard used to do some uh, extra work as a bouncer in nightclubs. I hope it ends up like that. And then, from what I hear, don't just uh, choose a bodyguard because of loyalty. Uh, I understand that the let uh, was so much... Uh, a believer in uh, realism. That is okay. In fact, that is the best person to guard him. 
somebody who is ready to die with them. But then loyalty comes with competence. Loyalty comes with competence from what is obviously out there is that this is the most incompetent uh, guard to a VIP protector. Why am I saying so? Just imagining that somebody can take a gun from you, irrespective of any condition you are in. Actually, to me, I said that um, when you are a VIP protector and you take alcohol, you are supposed to only take alcohol when the VIP is out of the country and uh, during the absence of that VIP is when you can really drink yourself hell. But when the VIP is within the boundaries of Kenya, you are supposed to be sober throughout and all the time you are on standby. Now, we, it is immaterial, at, I mean, for somebody talking on VIP protection to say the circumstances that this person uh, faced himself or whatever because that time he was not doing bouncer work. But trying to imagine that a VIP, a VIP protector, somebody can come, take a firearm from you, shoot you dead and shoot the other people that is, if I remember my 1987 instructors would, and actually I'll take this opportunity to say that uh, when, uh, when, something, when there is a scare, a VIP, a VIP scare, security scare, usually VIP experts, VIP protection experts usually spend sleepless nights. If someone can collect a firearm from you, and shoot you. It means that uh, you are weak. And that person can take the firearm from you. When the VIP is there. And shoot the VIP. Now. The VIP here is Mrs. Raila. Now, if Mrs. Raila was to die. By the time. I remember 1994 February. When Jaramogi died. Uh, there is a certain part of Kenya where tension was so culpable that it took the family time to reassure Kenyans and Kenyans of a particular place that uh, Jaramogi died a natural death. Now imagine a situation where Mama Ida is around, somebody takes the gun from the bodyguard and shoots Mama, Mama Ida. Uh, before we come to find out the truth that uh, it was a normal uh, whatever, a lot of people would be hurt if not dead. So I believe that uh, this is a wake-up call for VIP Protection Department. Yes, it is good to look for bodyguards, uh, VIP protectors, who are loyal to the subject, but loyalty comes second. Competence is the password. I'd rather assign an Ascari to protect a VIP who is more competent than loyal. Actually, loyalty sometimes it's uh, bad because uh, when it comes to work, uh, you follow the book. I remember uh, a certain uh, chief inspector who was transferred to Wajia uh, during the OAU meeting, uh, OAU meeting of 1981-82, which happened in Kenya. Uh, Julius Nyerere was, go was uh, uh, on top of the railway bridge between Landmawe and Kenya Polytechnic. And then uh, he wanted just to see how the trains are. But looking towards the uh, land Maui, there were people cheering him. And as like any poli populist politician, he wanted to go to land Maui and cheer them. But this fellow tried to reason with him that it, because of the security matters, 
Julius Nyerere did not hear it and then the chief inspector pushed him towards Kenya Polytechnic. Uh, that one costed him to be transferred immediately to Wajia. So, VIP protection, uh, competence of, uh, is the principal uh, point here and uh, loyalty or in this case worshipping comes as a subsidiary. It, uh, I hope that uh, his replacement or any other VIP protection people should in future look into such possibilities. That the only time a firearm can leave the hands of the VIP protector is when he's returning to the sergeant, the armory sergeant. But this issue of was he drunk, was he whatever, but even if he's drunk, just the belief that somebody can snatch the firearm from him. That's nightmare.